Hello and how are you?、Uh, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about numbers and how numbers are different in some languages and how quickly they evolve. So、um, the first number that we'll look at is number eight, which in Tagalog is walo, and、uh, in many, many, in fact, in almost all Austronesian languages, it sounds a lot like walo, walu, waru,、uh, valu, or something like that, except Malay and Indonesian. And some of the languages that are、uh, close to Malay and Indonesian geographically, and we'll take a look at why this happened,、uh, why certain languages decide to change their numbers all of a sudden. Okay, so let's、uh, bear with me for the next few minutes. I, I hope you find this interesting. So, if you look at this chart,、um, the numbers in Malay and Indonesian、uh, languages, these are all spoken to the west of the Philippines. Uh, except for Makassar and Bugis, which is spoken in in、uh, Sulawesi, just to the south, they tend to have very very strange numbers. Because if you look at the second column, the Proto-Austronesian numbers like one, two, three, and all, it's like Isa or Esa, Dusha, Telu, Sepat, Lima, Enam, Pitu, Walu, Siwa, Sapuluk. And I think uh, uh, for Filipino speakers, it's very very close to how you say it. And for Malay Indonesians,、uh, some numbers yes, some no. One of these is number eight. We'll look at number eight first because I like the number eight.、Uh, and and so number eight walo or walu in 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 Malay Indonesian it sounds more like delapan or lapan. In Malaysia we say lapan. Delapan is more common in standard Indonesian. But the other languages and dialects also have you know、uh, like in Achenese people say lapan.、Uh, in Bugis arua. Uh, in、uh, Makassar, Sagantuju, and Minangkabau, which is spoken in the on the west coast of Sumatra, and and parts of、uh, the the coastal areas of Sumatra as well, Salapan for eight. So where does this come from? This is a very interesting、uh, topic when we talk about why do numbers change? Because if you look at the word eight in in Proto Austronesian, Walu is like two syllables is a short word. Why we replace it with a longer word, Delapan? The number nine is Shiva or, or, or something like that. But why did it become Sembilan in in Malay? Why replace you know a, a short simple word with a much longer one?、Uh, we'll take a look. All right, in in the next few slides. So the original word for eight in in Austronesian in Proto Austronesian was Walu, and in Malagasy Valu.、Uh, in most Polynesian languages Valu, Vau, Waru, Walu, Valu, something like that. Okay.、Um, Except Malay and Indonesian, and and near, and the nearby languages. So why did Malay and some Western Indonesian languages replace the word walu? Well, if th-、uh, let, let's 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 put that aside for a while, and 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 let's talk about the replacements. Where does the delapan and lapan come from? Okay, so these are actually more complex phrases. They come from actually words like dua alapan. So dua means two. Alap as a verb like mengalap in in Malay or Indonesian, it means to remove a fruit from the branches of a tree with a stick or with a knife. So like like you've got a long cutting tool and you prod、uh, the the fruit from a tree and until it falls down, that's called alap mengalap. So it's two removed dua alapan. The an is a suffix that that turns it into a a, a noun. Two removed from ten dua alapan dari sepulo, and that's delapan or lapan. That's where it comes from. Okay. And then other languages as well have this. Other close、uh, languages, geographically, like the Makassar language, which is spoken on Sulawesi,、um, the word for eight is sagan tujo. So it's sa agang tujo. Sa is one, agang means with, and tujo is seven.、Uh, seven is another interesting number that that changed、uh, quite a lot in these languages. So we'll look at it、uh, in the latest in the latest slides. So now. Bugis as well has arua, which comes from karua. So it's a ka is a prefix. Rua means two, so literally means two that's taken from ten. Again,、uh, a similar concept as lapan. And why did this happen? Why would people want to avoid saying eight and use a a, a more complicated, you know, phrase?、Uh, yeah, let let's see. So the Malay word for widow is balu, and so in old Malay. If、in old Malay, they say walu. So balu and walu, they sound very, very similar. So maybe you know it, it, the the ancient Malay people thought, okay, if you use the, the word widow, you say it many, many, many times, it, it might actually come true, and somebody's husband might die. So because of that, it became more of a speech taboo, and because of the taboo on 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 saying this word, then you know it, it got replaced with something that's more polite and less offensive, and that's where it comes from. Okay,、uh, similar numbers、uh, like this are the number three telu. In in in、uh, old Malay, right? 
which for some reason in Indonesian and Malay, it became Tiga, the modern language, it became Tiga uh, as well. Uh, you'll notice that in Minangkabau as well, it's Tigo. Tigo. So where does this come from? Okay, let's take a look. So Talu, which is the old Malay word for uh, three, it, it sounds very similar to uh, Toru, uh, Tolu in Polynesian languages. It's very similar to Tatlo in Tagalog. Okay, uh, Talu means three and it sounds very similar to telur which means egg and in fact in malay dialect malaysian malay we don't pronounce the r at, at the end of a word so it's like telur 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 it sounds very similar to egg and so why the taboo against saying the word egg well uh, just like in many indian languages and i think in the philippines as well but correct me if i'm wrong uh, in malay slang uh, the word for egg is also a way to say testicles yeah, that that part of the of the, of the uh, male human body. So because of that, you might you might understand that when you want to count one, two, three, uh, counting in the old Malay in old Malay one, two, three, satu, dua, telu, it sounds a lot like one, two testicles. Exactly. So as you can imagine, people will want to avoid saying that, and that's why they replace the word telu with something else. In this case, uh, tiga which is from actually from high Javanese. So, so the Javanese language has different speech levels. Uh, the high Javanese word tiga, which was borrowed into Malay, comes from Sanskrit trika, meaning triple. So that, that's where it comes from. So this word, the number was borrowed uh, from, from Javanese, which borrowed this from Sanskrit. Uh, yeah, so that's where it comes from, okay? And let's look at some other number words as well. So if we go to the word for seven, which is tujo, why did pitu, you know, get replaced by tujo? Well, again, it, the Austronesian word for seven is pitu, and it's fitu, fitu, hiku, hitu. In other languages, very, very similar in almost all Austronesian languages, except Malay and Indonesian. For some reason, we we decide to use uh, tujo, and the reason is because this is a picture of Bambi here. Um, the original Austronesian word for seven, pitu, sounds a lot like piatu in Malay. Piatu means orphan. And maybe because an orphan might be a taboo or unrefined word, if you say the word orphan too many times, maybe somebody's parents might actually pass away. So it was replaced by tujo, meaning seven. Uh, and where does this tujo come from? All right, where does tujo come from? Uh, it actually comes from a proto austronesian word, something like tuzuk or tuzu, which means to point. And so the Malay word tuju, to aim at something, like if you take a gun and you point it at somebody and you shoot the, the bullet, tuju. You get manuju in, in, the, in the active form. Or tunjo, to show, to indicate. And I think also tudu, to accuse. That all comes from the same root in Malay. Uh, in Tagalog, turo, to teach, to point out. That also comes from uh, you know, to, uh, the, the Austronesian word for to point. And now, what is the link between pointing and the number seven? Well, if you, look, if you try to count with your fingers, um, your seventh finger is basically the pink finger that you point with. You, if you count from your, your pinky, your little finger, all the way across to your thumb and then to the other hand, one, two, three, four, six, seven, the seventh finger is the pointing finger. That's why point seven, that's where it comes from. And even in Malay today, we, we still call this finger the pointing finger, jari telunjo. Uh, that's, uh, that's the connection between to point, to show, and the number seven. Okay? And the, other, the last number is number nine. So if you look at the, 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 the last but one column, the, the shiva, uh, column that uh, is becomes that became sembilan in Malay, which is quite a long uh, word. And where does this come from, and why uh, was there the need to replace it? Well, uh, if we look at the uh, the word for nine in, in Malay, it was originally siam in old Malay, siam, which sounds a lot like Tagalog sham. Okay, and why would anybody want to replace the word for nine? Well, because in Malay, um, siam sounds like sial which means damned, unfortunate, unlucky. Uh, it's used as a curse word in Malay very, very often in Malaysia. You know, we, we say something is, is a damn it or bloody hell or something bloody, you know, stupid idiot. That's sial. There's something bad happening. So because of that, when you count in old Malay, seven, eight, nine, it's pitu, walu, siam. Okay, it sounds like Tagalog pito walo sham. Those are cognates. But in Malay, unfortunately, it sounds a lot like Piatu balu sial, which means orphan, widow, and damned or unfortunate. And if, if you say piatu balu sial as, as a phrase, it could actually even mean the damned orphan and the damned widow, which is not a very nice way to, to I guess, um, 
you know, to to um, to to express numbers, I guess. So that's why these numbers all got replaced in Malay and Indonesian. And in fact, not just Malay Indonesian. Uh, if we look at okay, look at the word for nine, right? So the word for nine in Malay is sambilan, so sa ambilan. So sa means one, ambil means to take something with your hand, and an is a suffix to show uh, uh, show that this is a noun. So sambilan is literally uh, nine, something that's taken from ten. That's implied. And in other languages as well, in Makassar is salapang. So sa is one, alap is to take, but but with um, as I explained before, it's to take fruit down from a tree with a stick or with a cutting tool. Salapan, salapang means uh, nine in Makassar. And in the Bugis language, asera comes from kasera. Ka is a prefix and sera means one. So asera means one, like taken from ten. That literally where it comes from. Uh, the word for nine in Achenese is sikurung. I think I don't speak Achenese, but if, if, I, if you do, please correct me. Sikurung, which comes from sa and kurang. So sa is one, kurang means less. Uh, this word is also found in, I think, a lot of Indonesian and Filipino languages. Kurang, kulang, you know, means less. So, one less than ten. Again, the same concept, okay? So, speaking of numbers, I think uh, uh, we all have quite interesting uh, numbers in our languages. So, please share with me uh, what you think. Uh, your language, for example, uh, how do you count in your language? And, and, and which pattern do they follow? Does your language follow the Malay-Indonesian pattern? Or does it follow the, the uh, original uh, proto austronesian pattern, which is quite common in the Philippines and in Polynesia? So let me know uh, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please like, share and subscribe because I'm trying to grow this channel. Uh, if you like the content, I really appreciate it. If you would, you know, um, subscribe. Uh,